Hello everyone. Today's video is about fitting 285s to a stock 4Runner. So if you're following this channel, you know this grey one is the 2021 TRD Pro. So I have used a Toyo Open Country A3 83 on 285 7017 tire size. First, let me tell you why did I pick 285s. You have to excuse the wind, it's a little windy and cold. Uh, okay, so the reason that I picked 285 is you know, I have used 275s in the past, so the tire that I've used is E rated or low E tires. I did not like the comfort of a load E tire. So then I look at 255 80 R17 tires. All the tires that I found on 255s are load E. So I don't want to be in the same situation as I was with 275s. I know 275 has a couple of tires that comes with C load and one of the famous tire with 275 is extremely heavy in fact it's heavier than the load e tire that i've used in the past so you might already notice that weight is a big concern for me because every pound of each tire is going to add up quickly so I picked up this 285 7017 Toyo Open Country 83s. The reason that I picked this one is so the stock Nito Terra Grappler came with this car is about 41 pounds each. So this Toyo Open Country is 47 pounds. So just about six pounds extra weight on each tire so it's not bad and also you may know fitting 285s might cause into rubbing issues later on the video i'm going to show you how i trim the front bumper and push the fender liner forward and then i still have a slight rubbing on the mud flap and i'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that problem. I've shown that uh, before, how I heat the mud flap on my TID off-road to clear the 285s. So again, back to Toyo Open Country 83s on the size 285 7070s. So this tire, as I said, is 46 pounds each. And also for the diameter, this is 32.76 inches in diameter so it's a 32.75 tall tire some of the 285s i'm not going to name the brands i'll give you a hint a model of the jeep brand named tire that is a 33 inch tire so if i use a 33 inch 285 7017 i would cause more rubbing so I need to keep this Forerunner with stuck suspension for now. So I need to find a relatively small diameter tire so that I have less rubbing on this car. So uh, there is also another tire, a new tire uh, that is named after there's a race. Uh, so it's a similar name. So that tire is 32.8. I really like that tire, but then I thought maybe I should stick with the relatively smaller diameter tire. And a weight is a big uh, item for me. So I picked this tire uh, checking all the boxes that I, that I had. I also had a different tire that in my mind and uh, in fact it was actually help from one of the Forerunner Forum members who talked about this bead thickness 
So when I looked at that tire versus Toyo Open Country 83, the speed was thicker. So the rim is like inside the tire and the bead comes little out from the tire. So maybe it'll provide a little bit of protection when I go off-road. And uh, yes, talking about off-road, I know some people loves um, all season tires and uh, claim that they are really good off-road, but uh, I'm scared. I like to have a good all-terrain tire and especially the three peak mountain snowflake rating i don't care people saying that this tire does not have three peak mountain snowflake rating but it's really good in snow i don't care this tire has three peak mountain snowflake rating that means it has meet the industry standard of severe winter driving so I don't go by the people saying, oh, this tire is great on snow, even though it had only mud and snow and does not have mountain, three peak mountain snowflake rating. But this has mud and snow and three peak mountain snowflake rating that has meet the industry standards. So without further ado, let me show you the front spacing. Uh, I have done the trimming in the front and I have to do uh, on the mud flat. So let me show you that video, how much of uh, space I have with this uh, bigger tire. And I'm going to show you how I trim the front bumper and how I'm going to fix the rubbing on the mud flat. So let's get the, into that part. You can see I have lot of room right here between the fender liner and the tire so you can see I have cut this bumper and push the fender liner forward so I have plenty of gap right there. So this is the spot that the tire rubs on the mud flap. So you can see this mud flap can be pushed backwards. So I'm going to use a heat gun or a blowtorch to push this mud flap back so it will have more room. So you can see you can push this mud flap back. So then it will give you about almost a finger um, distance to the tire so use a heat source to change or push this mud flap back like this all right so let me show you the tire and the suspension setup so let's check the suspension so you can clearly see this is stock TRD Pro suspension there's no space spacer or any kind of modification to the suspension so I've seen videos somebody trying to fix 295 
tires saying that it is stock TRD Pro suspension but people can clearly see that person has a spacer so this is the stock TRD Pro suspension there is no space or anything like that so so this is the stock TRD Pro suspension so I'm trying to show you as much as possible so people doesn't fall for like fake videos so this is the stock TRD Pro suspension so the stock strut the shock and the spring and the stock perch that comes with the TRD Pro suspension stock upper control arm everything stock so this is the stock suspension and fitting 285 70 17 tire so this is passenger rated 285 70 17 tire with load rating 117 and this tire is a severe winter rated tire so you can see the three peak mountain snowflake rating also with mud and snow I know people debate tires with mud and snow certain tires with mud and snow are great on snow but I don't care if you don't have three peak mountain snowflake rating that tire doesn't comply with the industry standard of winter weather the rubber compound the thread is comply when you have three peak mountain snowflake rating so this is the front and the back tire the same and let me show you the spare tire many people forget about the spare tire so this is the same spare tire fit under the stock location so there is the gap behind the hitch and this is the gap at the front so I have plenty of gap between the pan hard bar so nothing rubs so hope this helps you to check if you're thinking with the 285 70 17 fits so here you are in the stock spare tire location so for the tools these are the only tools that I'm going to use on this project so I'm going to use this precision uh, cutting knife or whatever that is called uh, it's not in perfect condition because I have used it a few times so this precision cutting uh, knife is one of the tools that I'm using and then this file so I don't have uh, like the hand holder because uh, I like to keep it low profile so I can use it uh, on like small space area so I'm using file and just a regular camping gas portable gas things and this uh, add-on uh, I don't know what's it called you can open the gas like this and uh, I don't think you can see clearly so it has uh, fire so this is how I am going to heat 
the uh, mud flap and push it backwards so first I'm going to uh, trim the bumper I have already done it I'll show you a little bit how it is done and then this heating of the mud flap I keep it overnight so once I'm done with the trimming I'm going to put this car back in the garage heat the mud flap keep a wood or something to keep that mud flap pushed backwards and leave it overnight so when it cools down it's gonna stay as is like pushed backwards so this I'm gonna do it later uh, and then uh, I will show you a little bit how I did it uh, the trimming you how you can uh, cut the lower part of your bumper to clear the larger wheels so this is a TRD Pro and I'm going to use this tool uh, to do the trimming so this is like a precision cut uh, tool so I come to the edge of the bumper like this and I start shaving off the plastic pieces like this so you can see these small shavings so make sure your knife is uh, very sharp uh, if the knife is not sharp you you need to replace your blade and use a sharper blade so if you do this method uh, it won't damage your paint so at the beginning you can do like big shaves let me show you so this is like a plastic piece from the beginning face uh, and towards the end I do it like really small chunks so it doesn't uh, damage the paint and the cut would be uh, like very precise so you can remove the uh, blades like this insert a new one and uh, you can do your trimming like this so let me do a quick walk around of the car to show how it looks so going around the side so that's how it looks on the side of it and as I showed you I have the spare tire same size spare tire along the sides So there you have it. Hope this video helps. Give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, seeing uh, these kind of videos in the future. And uh, see you on the next video.